My parents are wonderful. They are wonderful, wonderful people, and they've always been so, so supportive of me, even when I was little, because as a child, I was a bit of a problem child. <laughs> The problem with me is that I always wanted to be on stage, even when I was a little boy. And I was never cast in any of the plays at school because I was a slightly unfortunate looking child and I had a speech impediment. <laughs> Which is not the funny bit. <laughs> yes, ah, thank you very much. People laughing over there, f you, okay? Oh, yeah, laugh at the boy with the speech impediment. That's not the bit that we're meant to laugh. Also, it appears to have come back. What? <laughs> You've triggered me, bitch. <laughs> anyway, I have a truth. <laughs> yeah. I had a speech impediment. <laughs> and what would that Stop it! No! I auditioned for all the plays at school and I never got into any of them. So then what would happen is that my parents would complain to the school and the drama teacher would be forced to just make up parts in plays <laughs> to shut me up. And it was deeply embarrassing for everyone concerned. Because I'd be there, stood on stage, giving it my all. My parents would be in the audience, plastering on a brave face, but deep down, everyone knew there was no emu in the nativity. <laughs> Anyone else have one of those nativity plays where they just let any f***er in? <laughs> yeah, they were ridiculous. I just stood up there on stage as the emu next to a lobster and Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> And my mum would try to cheer me up about it. She'd be like, Jack, you never know, there may have been an emu in the manger. <laughs> I'm like, Mummy, let's look at the facts here. <laughs> Firstly, emus native to Australia. <laughs> and more importantly, they can't fly. <laughs> so unless this emu was a very strong swimmer or shagging one of the wise men, I call bullshit. <laughs> yes. I knew that emus were native to Australia. I knew everything there was to know about emus. Why? Because I am a proper actor. I had researched my role. <laughs> yeah. A role that I so desperately tried to build up in that play. Oh, I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with that drama teacher over her stupid script that was basically all one big circle jerk to Patrick Windler, who'd been cast as the donkey. Oh, isn't the donkey amazing? He took Mary and Joseph from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Do you know how long it took him, that 90-mile journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem? It took the donkey four days. Four days! Have you ever heard of Waze, mate? That is a joke! No wonder there was no room at the inn by the time you arrived. That single star in the sky wasn't God giving directions, that was his Uber rating. Yeah. And what do you expect? What do you expect? If you pick a dumb animal with an average land speed of nine miles per hour, especially when in the same nativity scene, you have the second fastest bird on the planet, <laughs> capable of an average land speed of 31 miles per hour. <laughs> What's that I hear you ask? How long would the journey have taken by emu? Two hours and 54 minutes. <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mary would be giving birth in the penthouse suite right now if she'd gone by emu and not in some shitty barn next to a cow and a sheep and frickin' SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> It's not just speed as well, ladies and gentlemen. Emus are built for comfort as well. <laughs> Famously double feathered. Oh, yes. Emus are like a cushion on stilts. <laughs> Meanwhile, have you seen the state of a donkey's back recently? Oh, 90 miles over rustic terrain, straddling that. All I'm saying is that if you still want Mary to look like a virgin by the time she arrives... <laughs> Hop on board! <laughs>